Monday Matinee, your weekly series of live plays, classic drama and comedy, and a variety of audio drama from the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Welcome to the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio drama. I'm Jack Ward with another very special guest, co-host who you will have heard on Mutual Audio Network. He's a director, producer, writer, and of course, actor supreme and co-host to Sonic Echo, my other Sonic brother, Jeffrey Billard. Hey, Jeff. Thanks so much for coming in tonight, brother. Oh, Jack, it's my pleasure. It's an honor to be here. You know, I've listened to this for so long, years, like a decade maybe. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted to be on the show, so now my, one of my dreams is true. <laughs> Bucket list time. It is, it is. It's ticked off. It's like when I told Bill Holweg all I wanted to do was be on Jake Sampson. And oh, uh, and no. he, I got to right in the end. I got to play a German soldier. That's awesome. Yeah, it was great. So, another tick well, off the list. Yes, for sure. With David Alt continuing his live No Sleep podcast show, it's wonderful to have you come in. And also to hopefully get us together for a new Sonic Echo soon. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for the next season of Sonic Echo. Uh, I just yeah. love doing that show with you guys so much. So much fun. <laughs> well, unfortunately, or fortunately, we have a packed show tonight with Terms from Lindsey Graham. A three-episode audio drama political thriller and not that Lindsey Graham. A different one. One of those rare audio animals I'm always seeking our political thriller. And it all begins right here on the Sonic Society. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> they tried to marginalize us to tell us our America was a thing of the past. But tonight, I will become the next president of the United States. Tonight, we take this country back. Well, there you've heard it. Candidate Charles Dunwalk breaking with tradition and addressing his campaign supporters with polls still open in a large majority of the country. Wow. It's almost 7.30 p.m. here on the East Coast with a lot of voting yet to be done. But Charles Dunwalk is taking the unusual step of addressing his supporters as though he has this very close race already wrapped up. I want to bring in Rebecca Montgomery, host of Inside Track. Are you surprised at all by any of this? Davis, what hasn't been surprising about this Dunwalk run for the White House? I mean, six months ago, no one even believed Charles Dunwalk had any hope of securing the Republican nomination because, you know, he was so unconventional. Right. But then when he won the nomination, no one thought he could make a close race of it. I mean, they, well, we, because I have to include myself on this, <laughs> counted him out even before the Democrats had chosen their nominee. Yeah, well, we all are probably guilty of that to some extent. But it was an uphill battle for the Republicans this year, right. even though Oliver Pierce remains an incredibly popular president. It's extremely rare for a party to maintain control of the White House after holding it for two terms. Exactly. It's only happened once in the last century. And that was with the sitting vice president as the candidate. Sure. Well, that's definitely not the case here. No. Dunwalk beat Vice President Garza early mm -hmm. in the primaries and has been campaigning against the status quo, against the Republicans, even though he himself is a Republican. Dunwalk has definitely not been trying to ride on Pierce's coattails. No, in fact, this is the first time that a sitting president has failed to endorse the nominee from his own party. President Pierce is staying completely silent on this election. Completely it's just, silent. It's just almost as if he wants no part of it. Well, regardless of how reluctantly he does it, the only thing Oliver Pierce really has left to do is to congratulate the winner. And then, well, I guess off into the sunset, so to speak. But the mm. big question still actually remains, who will he be congratulating? Well, Rebecca, we'll begin to have numbers for you very soon. But as we wait for states to close their polls, I want to bring in Democratic pollster Sidney Howard. Sidney, you've been tracking the exit polls for Ohio and Pennsylvania. Come in. Mr. President, Ron Clarkson is on line three. Thank you, Zach. Ron. You hear that? You get to ride into the sunset. How do you know what channel I was watching? Because you think Rebecca's cute, even though she's mean to you. What do you know that's useful? So far, turnout's been high in the only two states that matter. RNC's pretty sure the total may fall short, but Dunwalk has the electoral votes. So it's over. You sound like your turtle just died. 
Look, you finished strong. You helped the party hold on to the White House. Take the compliment and start working on your short game. Oliver? Ron, I need you here tomorrow. I'll fill you in later. Right now I have to go to dinner at the Vice President's. But tomorrow you need to meet with me? Yes. So, that part about your work being done? It's just beginning. Terms. Are you out of your goddamn mind? You can't be serious! Keep your voice down, Victor. They'll hear you. It's my damn house for the next eight weeks, and I will not keep my voice down! Do you realize what you're asking me to do? Of course I do. I know better than anyone. And you know I would never do anything to hurt you if there was another way. I'm asking- Hurt me? You want to annihilate me! This finishes me! Even if it goes nowhere, my- You're my already career... finished, Victor! I'm sorry, but it's true. This was your shot. It didn't work out, but there's still important things that we- Oh, because do. you say so? You call the shots? You always call the shots! I did everything you asked, every photo op, every campaign speech. Eight years I stood next to you to show everyone how big your tent was. I... I that's not... Oh, 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 really? You didn't use me to fight your demographic Victor, problem? Victor, I did... Because it sure feels like I've been playing your one brown friend for a long time... All you did was bore people in two languages! Victor, I brought you with me all the way, not because of your last name, but because I trust you. Because I know you're a good man, but you're not without blame, Victor. There is a reason things were covered up. I'm not here to scold you. I I'm not trying to punish you. I'm here to tell you that you can make a difference. You can help me do something about all of this. It's too late, Oliver. He won. Taking me down isn't going to change that. Oliver? What's going on in here? Sorry, Christina, it's my fault. I shouldn't have spoiled the evening talking shop. Oh, I think we all know what you were talking about. But if you can say it to my husband, can then you can just... say it Honey, to me. that's not no? what we're even... No, if he's in here blaming my husband for what is happening tonight, then it's about me, Christina, too. Christina, no This is one not is... my husband's fault, Oliver. He was with you when you needed him. And now, after you all stood by and watched this happen, you want to say it's his fault? Christina... All of you kept your mouth shut during the primary until it was too late. You got exactly what you deserved with Dunwalk. You're right, Christina. We created this mess. It's all of our responsibility. We should go. I'm sorry, tensions got high, but... Good night, Christina. Victor. I'm sorry. I know you've always given everything you can for this administration and for this country. I know you will continue to do that. You gonna tell me what that was about? I had some things to talk to Victor about he didn't like. And I am asking you what those things were and what made him start yelling. And I am telling you, I'm not telling you. What? I am telling you that we talked, that he got angry, and that we're going to work through it, but I am not going to talk about it. What? Just no? And I'm just supposed to walk away? That's suddenly who you think I am? I know that's not who you are. And I also know you're not a woman I'm going to lie to, so I'm telling you truthfully that I am not going to tell you. You don't just... I don't. But I am. That is unacceptable. I know, but... I have a congratulatory statement to write. And this to answer. We are not done discussing... Fine. General. Yes, I am. Good evening, Mr. President. Evelyn. Fox News and the Pace website have already called it for Dunwalk. They're expecting a concession call within the hour, and then they will be asking for a statement from you. I asked Gary to have a few of the speechwriters stay late in case you want to let them... Here's what I want to say. Verbatim. Quiet, please. 
Whenever you're ready, sir. Tonight, the American people completed a ritual that is the cornerstone of our democracy. It is neither perfect nor an easy process. Yet it is perhaps the most important tool we have as a people to build the nation we want to inhabit. That is the point of our elections, and perhaps for everything we do as public servants, to build a more perfect union. Today you have selected the leaders that will steer our nation, from the White House to the State House to the Courthouse, and to all those who tonight have been chosen by the people to lead them, to guide them, I wish you wisdom, wisdom and resilience in the face of conflict, wisdom and humility in the face of those you have been selected to serve. I congratulate Charles Dunwalk on the great honor that has been bestowed upon him by the people of our country. In the coming months, I will do whatever I am able to assist in a successful transition while still keeping to the important duties of keeping our country safe. And when I leave this office, I will do so with the firm faith that I leave it in the capable hands of a servant of the people. God bless our union. God bless the United States of America. Yes, sir. We'll have it out within the hour. Thank you, Evelyn. Ron, tomorrow, one o'clock, Zach will pick you up in the back of Philomena's, where you will be having lunch. Come in the delivery entrance and don't bring your phone. Are you serious? I'm very serious. What are we meeting about? I cannot let that man become president. <laughs> Terms is a Spoke Media production. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Stitcher, Wondery.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Featuring Brandon Potter, Kent Williams, Whitney Holitick, Jeffrey Schmidt, Aaron Roberts, Robert McCollum, Tony Ramirez, Lydia Mackey, Christy Vela, and Ellen Losey. Creator and executive producer, Lindsey Graham. Co-executive producers Keith Reynolds, Michael Federico, and Robert McCollum. Coordinating producer Aliyah Tavakolian. Music by Lindsey Graham. Written by Robert McCollum and Michael Federico. Directed by Robert McCollum. Distributed by Wondery. Tonight, I will become the next president of the United States. Tonight, we take this country back. Previously on Terms. Ron, tomorrow, one o'clock, Zach will pick you up in the back of Philomena's, where you will be having lunch. Come in the delivery entrance and don't bring your phone. What are we meeting about? I cannot let that man become president. You got exactly what you deserved with Dunwalk. Do you realize what you're asking me to do? Of course I do. I know better than anyone. And you know I would never do anything to hurt you if there was another way. I'm asking... Hurt me? You want to annihilate me? So, that part about your work being done... It's just beginning. Tonight on Mandatory Measures with Davis Fry, President-elect Charles Dunwalk sits down for his first interview since election night. I'm Davis Fry. You're watching Mandatory Measures. President-elect Dunwalk, thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, it's my pleasure. First, you were the surprise candidate. Then you were the surprise nominee for the Republican Party. Now, for a large portion of Americans, you are the surprise president-elect. So I guess my first question is... Are you surprised you're here? No, not at all. We knew we'd win from day one. Let's talk about that win. 
Obviously, the electoral math broke your way, but the popular vote went to your Democratic opponent, Senator Cameron Carlisle. Nearly one million more Americans voted for the senator than for you. What concerns might you have taking the office without a mandate from the American people? Oh, look, the president of the United States, simply by virtue of being the president of the United States, has a mandate. It doesn't concern you. You want a mandate, Davis? Look at the down-ballot elections. Look at the number of men and women sweeping into Congress who support me. Here's your mandate. The American people not only want me in office, they want me to do what I promised I would do without obstruction. Mr. Dunwalk, a number of those promises remain incredibly controversial. All right, look, there I'm are... going to stop you right there. Every promise I made, every policy I laid out, every platform I campaigned on, it comes back to one thing. America first. America first. That's it. The fact we've reached a point in this nation where the idea of putting America first is controversial, it's ludicrous to me. Absolutely ludicrous. Zach, where the hell are you taking me? I don't understand the question, Mr. Clarkson. Where are we? You're at lunch, sir. You never left the restaurant. We never talked. You never came here. The president is waiting inside. Enjoy your day. Terms. I thought I'd been in every room in this building. Where the hell are we? This place is creepy. Huh. The few Secret Service agents that know about it call it the cage. Which it is. A Faraday cage. And an EMP generator. You left your phone at home, right? Because the sparks and smoke can be rather spectacular. I think Zack just threatened me. Oh, don't be silly. Zack likes you. What is going on, Oliver? So long as that machine is going, no one can record anything that is said in this room. Not the machine. Why am I here? Charles Dunmore cannot be the next president. And you and I are going to make sure of that. All right, you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. America first doesn't mean turning friends into enemies. America first just means demanding the respect that we deserve. That's it. And we've lost that respect because of the policies and actions of the current Republican administration and the Democratic administration that came before. You think that other nations, including our allies, have lost respect for America because of the Pierce administration? Look... I believe Oliver Pierce is a good man. I believe he's a smart man. What do they say about him? He's playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers. Davis, do you know what it takes to be great at chess? I'm asking, do you know? Uh, yeah, it takes I... a willingness to sacrifice your own pieces in order to eventually, eventually win the game. I'm not willing to sacrifice my own. I'm not willing to sacrifice American lives or American jobs or our American future. Yeah, Oliver Pierce is a good, smart man, like all the other good, smart men who appeased their enemies and let them take their pawns, who allowed terrorists and the countries that support them to take thousands of American lives because the long-term strategy allowed for it. Now, that's not me. Not a game I have any interest in playing. Then how do you approach? You ever study Syria? Huh? Probably not, right? Maybe you can locate it on a map, maybe you can't, doesn't matter. I have studied Syria and the Syrian people, and the people of countries just like it. So was President Pierce and Congress and Homeland Security. We know what countries the threats will come from before they even know it themselves. If we know this, if we know where the threat will be. It's our duty to eliminate that threat before it ever has a chance to arise. It's our duty to wipe it out. Am I wrong? 
What are you talking about? Where would you even start? Well, there's many a slip twixt the cup and the lip. Wonderful, Oliver. Now is the perfect time for your folksy bullshit. The founders thought of this. They put things in place to stop men like Dung Wong from taking power. Ben Franklin talked about They it. meant outside threats, Oliver. What we're talking about is treason. No, I'm talking about exploiting certain procedures that have been laid out in... We don't all have your gift for semantics, all right? The American people will see it as treason. World leaders will see it as treason. You know why? Because it's fucking treason. Are you finished? Why would you do this? You're the man who finally brought compromise back to the federal government. You're the man who worked tirelessly... And I cannot allow Charles Dunwalk to destroy all of that. I can't hand the government over to a man whose only goal is to dismantle that government. Jesus Christ, what am I doing here? Everyone always said you were the cool one, Ron. Clarkson never breaks under pressure. That's why Pierce needs him. He'll keep you calm in a crisis. Yeah, you and I both know that's not true. Yes, we do. So, I need you to follow me on this. Stay calm and give me a chance to talk. Mr. Dunwalk, I'm going to read a statement you made, and if you would, I'd like you to clarify it for me and our viewers at home. Yeah, sure. At a campaign stop in Ohio, you said, The American judiciary is like the guy who points a gun at you and tells you to give him all your money. Then, after he takes your money, he shoots you anyway. <laughs> I actually forgot about that one. It's pretty good. What did you mean by it? Look, I grew up outside of Chicago. Chicago is an incredible city. Best sports town you'll ever see. Best food, jazz, art, all of it. Unfortunately, on the flip side, Chicago and corruption go hand in hand. Capone, Dillinger, all the old organized crime guys, sure. But then you have the Daly family that decided Democrats should get to rule like kings. The list goes on and on. Point is, I know what corruption looks like. Seen it my whole life. But nothing I've seen compares to the corruption of the American court system. There are judges pretending, <laughs> and not well, mind you, pretending to be objective. Judges who have taken it upon themselves to dictate social policy, to determine how we should raise our children, who have decided that their will, not the will of the American people, is all that matters. I bring up the judiciary because you'll be responsible for filling at least two vacancies on the United States Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Some think it could even be three seats if you were to win re-election. Tell me, what does a Dunwalk Supreme Court look like? A person who looks at states like Kansas, who hold their judges accountable for their rulings, who say that their state legislature has the right to remove judges who go too far afield. A person who looks at that and says, they got it right, that person is a Dunwalk Supreme Court justice. The only person worthy to sit on the highest court in the land is a person who understands that the court itself represents the greatest abuse of power in our government. If you were this committed, why didn't you just campaign against him? Endorse the Democrat? Because by the time it was clear what had to happen, it was too late. It would have solidified his outsider status and helped him win. And it would have made it difficult for me to do what I need to do now. Let it go. Just help get him out in four years. Four years. That man will destroy the country on day one. He believes compromise is weakness and winning is more important than doing what's right. Millions of lives mean nothing to him. You've been around long enough to know what this man is, Ron. What he really is. I'm not paranoid. I'm not crazy. I'm trying to save the country. So why not just kill him? This isn't a vendetta. We're not the mob. I know. So where do you start? Try to find something to get him impeached? Mm, that still puts him in office and it could take years. We have to stop him before he's even sworn in. Sorry, Oliver, that happens in 72 days. We go after the Electoral College. Schiller's old boo? Even if he resurrects it, it's never going to get through in time. If we just need it out there. It starts the conversation and gets people questioning the college's legitimacy. People have been bitching about the Electoral College for 200 years. It's done nothing. Why would now be any different? Because... We are going to add fuel to the fire. That may be the case for you, but when many people, politicians, and the public hear some of your ideas on foreign policy, ideas that essentially cast longtime allies in adversarial roles... But that's not the they, case. That's not the case at all. Places like Germany, Japan, they're not adversaries. To me, they're allies in the way that uh, my son is an ally. At the same time, when my son graduated from college, I made it clear he was on his own. It was time for him to be a man. Germany? Japan? 
They're the kids who turn 27 and are still living in the apartment above mommy and daddy's garage. It's time for them to stand on their own two feet. It's time for them to help defend themselves. Let me just read you a statement, from a joint statement made by six members of the German Bundestag. This speech was delivered in Berlin today. This happened just today. His proposals are dangerous to Germany, dangerous to the European Union, dangerous to his own people, and dangerous to the world. If Mr. Dunwalk were to take action on any of these policies in regard to Germany or the EU, it is our belief that the entire Union must strongly consider sanctions against the United States of America. Today, sir, you have European allies making unprecedented statements suggesting sanctions against the United States based on your proposals and your rhetoric. Okay. Look, let me tell you about Germany. We know everything that they're doing. We always know everything that they're doing, which is good, because we all know what happens when Germany is left to its own devices. Now, this bravado, let's see how brave they are when they no longer have the United States military to back them up. Let's hear the tough talk when they're no longer free to trade with the United States or when we decide to reclaim the digital frontiers our own. Let's see how hard-nosed Germany is, or France, or England for that matter, when we shut down their access to the internet. That's not even... I'm sorry, sir, but this all sounds incredibly adversarial. Norvad? Oliver, Norvad would destroy Victor. You willing to sacrifice your own vice president? I am. Well, what if he finds out? He's not Victor gonna... knows everything, and he knows what needs to be done. He is, above all things, a patriot. I'm sure that'll be great comfort to him when he's in prison. Let me worry about Victor. Who else knows? No one. Gwen? No. She can't know, ever. I believe everything I intend to do is right. But, as you said, others may see it differently... There could be a noose at the end of this path, and I have to keep Gwen safe. She'll find out. She's smarter than both of us. My wife isn't the issue right now. There's no turning back once this starts, and I need to know if you're in. Honest and unwavering. First city council campaign I ran for you. Honest and unwavering. That's Oliver Pierce. I could have gone with arrogant and bullheaded, but honest and unwavering played better. I need an answer, Ron. Honest, unwavering, and a man I trust completely. What do you want me to do first, Mr. President? We are just about out of time. I want to thank President-elect Charles Dunwalk again for sitting down and talking with us. And now, as is always the case on mandatory measures, we give our guests the last word. Mr. Dunwalk, the floor is yours. Thanks for having me, Davis. Elections last a long time. Honestly, I feel like I campaigned for three years, and I bet it felt like a decade for you all. Brutal. What the American people are subjected to over the course of an election, just brutal. It gets hard to know what's true and what's just another talking point. My opponent, Senator Carlisle, uh, you might remember, was real fond of saying, the enemy is at the gate. The enemy is at the gate. The enemy is at the gate. People love that stuff. It's got urgency. Ring of truth. The enemy is at the gate. Nonsense. The enemy is not at the gate, my friends. The enemy lives within the walls of this city. Look, the enemy might be your co-worker, your neighbor, your child's teacher. The enemy might pray five times a day so you don't notice him funneling money to terrorists. The enemy might look like a beggar so you feel sorry for him, all the while he's collecting welfare for a disability he doesn't really have. The enemy might be the family that says they want nothing more than to live the American dream, when in fact, they got no right to be here. The enemy is the person you see at a party, or maybe someone you knew in high school and just keep up with on Facebook. She's the one telling everybody to shut up and just let everyone do what they want. Marriage is for everybody. Abortion is right. Marijuana cures cancer. Let people do what they want. But this is the same woman who would scratch your eyes out for merely suggesting that you have the right to own a gun. The enemy is the couple next door who look down on you for loving your country too much, who mock you for going to church, who shout at you because you dare to raise your child in the way you see fit. The enemy 
is not at the gates. The enemy is all around you. It's hard to hear, I know. And it's hard to make the right decisions when facing all of this chaos. But it's okay. It's going to be okay. Because I'm willing to make those hard decisions. Terms is a Spoke Media production. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Stitcher, Wondery.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Featuring Kent Williams, Brandon Potter, Robert McCollum, Aaron Roberts, and Jeffrey Schmidt. Creator and executive producer, Lindsey Graham. Co-executive producers, Keith Reynolds, Michael Federico, and Robert McCollum. Coordinating producer, Aliyah Tavakolia. Music by Lindsey Graham. Written by Robert McCollum and Michael Federico. Directed by Robert McCollum. To tell us about how you listen to podcasts, visit wondery.com slash survey. Distributed by Wondery. Previously on Terms. What? Just no? And I'm just supposed to walk away? That's suddenly who you think I am? I know that's not who you are. I'm telling you, truthfully, that I am not going to tell you. Norvad? Oliver, Norvad would destroy Victor. You willing to sacrifice your own vice president? Do you realize what you're asking me to do? Of course I do. I know better than anyone. And you know I would never do anything to hurt you if there was another way. I'm asking... Hurt me? You want to annihilate me? Who else knows? Gwen? No. She can't know, ever. There could be a noose at the end of this path, and I have to keep Gwen safe. Four times. What? There have been four times in the whole of our marriage that I knew you were keeping something from me. I'm not complaining. That's way better than most. What are you... And right now... Gwen. There have been things I didn't know, or couldn't know, but this isn't like that. I can't talk about certain things. You know that. No. This isn't some national security thing you aren't allowed to mention. This is something you are choosing not to tell me about. So I think, what would that be? Is it something to do with me? With us? There's nothing. But I know you'd tell me that. To my face, no matter how painful. You proved that. What are you... Which I appreciated. Back then and now. So maybe it's something you don't want me to worry about. Some threat. But any threat to you is a threat to me and to David. You wouldn't leave him in school if you knew he was in danger. Gwen. So, it must be something you're ashamed of. Terms. Agent Franks, take a seat. Just one more moment. Okay. Thank you for meeting me, James. I... Absolutely, Mr. President. I was not expecting this honor. I, you are in the Northern District of Illinois. In Chicago? Um... Rockford Resident Agency, yes, sir. I worked Boone, Carroll, DeKalb counties. And you Some handled of... the Norvad case while it existed. I don't understand. What exactly... James, you're not in trouble. You and I are just having an off-the-record chat. A private conversation that neither of us will ever mention. And I want you to tell me how the Norvad case went away. Sir, I don't... James... When the first allegations about the Norvad contract came up, I found a few things that sent up red flags. And then you were moved off the case. After I discovered... Uh, after you discovered that some members of my cabinet were also implicated, you were told to stop digging and tell your assistant U.S. attorney that you'd been pulled off, that resources were needed elsewhere. How do you... Well, the order came from my office, James. 
I wasn't personally involved, but I'm not proud that it happened on my watch. Evidently, it was decided that there wasn't ultimately anything to it, and the negative press would do more damage to a member of my cabinet than it would have made a difference in the election. How could you know it would James, I'm not here to defend the actions of my administration to you. I'm asking you for information. I just want to know who else you told about the investigation. When I started looking into it, I contacted Richard Valdez. He's the assistant U.S. attorney. Just told him to be ready in case anything panned out. I sent him some of my initial findings, but I think when he found out I wasn't going to be looking into it any further, he had to let it go. Valdez. And you think he might still have that case file, even if it's been closed? Oh, it's not closed. It was never opened. But never got enough traction without an investigator. Chicago office? Rockford, sir. James, two things are going to happen from this point. First, someone from the press is going to become interested in this case. If and when that interest leads anyone to you, you are to be as helpful and forthcoming as you can. That's first. Understood? Yes, sir. The second thing is that when you tell no one about this meeting, which I know I can rely on you to do, you go on a very short list of people I can trust. And those people I do not forget. You can count on me, Mr. President. James, I wouldn't have asked you here if I had any doubt. In fact, I'd like you to meet someone who will be able to help you if you need it. Zach. Yes, Mr. President. Can you send Ron in, please? Yes, sir. James, this is Ron Clarkson. Hello, sir. Hello, Agent Franks. Ron, James might call you with questions in the coming weeks about how to handle some things. Of course, sir. Happy to help. Sir, I Thank you, James. I'll get you Ron's contact information. For now, there's nothing more for you to do but be helpful. Just as you're being helpful to me now. I don't know if it's something you've done or something you are going to do or something you weren't able to stop, but it's there. And it scares me. Gwen, do you trust me? I do. And do you believe that I trust you? I hope you do. Then trust that I am doing what I am doing for the right reasons, and that if I'm not telling you about it, there's a reason for that, too. Oliver, I am not upset that you're not telling me something. I am worried for you, because there's something you're so unsure about that you're afraid to tell me, who has always stood with you no matter what. You're that unsure about it, but you're going ahead with it anyway. I'm not unsure about it. I'm just... Exploring options. The woman is a viper. Yeah, a viper who owns one of the largest media outlets in the country. Which she uses to paint you as a cross between Bill Buckley and Mussolini. I appreciate your loyalty. I know she's gone after me. They've all gone after you. That's not the problem. The problem is her sight is just shy of a tabloid. Your son fails physics. They write about it. You and your wife spend a weekend apart. They write about it. She traffics in cheap gossip. That's not all she does, and you know it. We cannot get into bed with Victoria Pace. We can't. This isn't clean. You of all people should know this will not be clean. Exploring options is something we do together. Gwen, you are the only person whose opinion matters to me more than mine. I don't know if there's anything to talk about yet. We're a team. Trust me, I haven't forgotten that. Mr. President. Miss Pace, thank you for coming. Where are we? Please, sit down. Mr. President, you didn't have to summon me here just to scold me. You can always have one of your people do it for you. Now, why would I scold you? If not for your sight, how would people know what young actors look like now that they're all grown up? I just assumed you had read our latest Legacy Lacks Laudables. Huh. Your writers have discovered alliteration. Despite the headline, it's a strong article. Well, it's not so much an article as it is a catalog of all your administration's shortcomings. You never gave us a chance, Victoria. Excuse me? You decided what we were before we ever got here, and you stuck with that no matter what. That's not... Everything we did was what we thought was best for the American people. You're free to disagree with that, of course. But that's not what your people do. They can't be bothered to consider things like the true motive, or long-term benefits, or potential consequences of decision. Not when there's a Republican boogeyman in the White House to write about. 
So you did summon me here just to scold me. <laughs> Not at all, Victoria. Everything we say from this point forward is off the record. I will deny that this meeting ever took place. Do you understand? Why? Do you agree? Oh, I'm curious, so I agree. I asked you here because I need your help. You need my help? I find that hard to believe. Off the record, why am I here? The work your site did on the Dunwall campaign impressed me. Beneath the usual bluster, there was truth to be found. Nuance, even. Your people discovered things that I'm sure Dunwalk worked hard to hide. Your party let a menace into the race, sir. And despite what you might think of us, my people have the country's best interest at heart, too. We did our duty. It wasn't enough. I hear things, Miss Pace. I hear nearly everything, as you can imagine. Rumors, gossip, facts. Hard to tell them apart sometimes. Mr. President... In all the darkness, two words seem to keep finding the light. Dunwalk, bribery. If you're referring to the Norvat case, we heard the same, but nothing came of it. Hmm. Bribery gets tossed around with the names of anyone in power. You, me, the Pope. Doesn't mean it's true. Do you remember your first house, Victoria? Sir? Yeah, there's nothing like it. When Gwen and I closed on our first house, barely bigger than an apartment, really, we were so proud. You know, like our lives had finally started. Do you remember that? With all due respect, I was gifted two homes on my wedding day. <sighs> the struggles of an heiress. Well, for Gwen and me, the first little house meant everything. We cleaned up, planted a garden, hung drapes. But less than a year after we bought it, we started having problems with the plumbing. You know, pipes rattling and screeching. Finally, it got to the point where we had to call a plumber. I knew it was going to cost a fortune, but we had to do whatever we could to take care of our house. So the plumber comes over, looks all around, finally pulls out a hammer and bangs it against one of the pipes. And, just like that, the rattling is gone. He puts the hammer away, turns to me, and says, that'll be $200. Now, I was more than a little upset. I told him, I could have done that. I have a hammer. The plumber said, a hammer's no good if you don't know where to hit. I'm not sure. I stand... Assistant U.S. Attorney Richard Valdez. United States Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois. The Rockford Office, not Chicago. Why are you telling me this? He's been elected. The election's over. What could... You think there's a chance Dunwalk has done something that could put him out of office? Well, what I think in this case is irrelevant. What you find out, however... This... is payback, isn't it? Lure me here with tawdry little tales. Send me and my staff digging, knowing that if we even get a taste, we'll put it out for the world to see, and then somehow we'll be made to look like fools, or worse. The crazy liberal media hell-bent on destroying the country. For what? I'm sorry, sir. You have stepped away. Victoria, this isn't payback. Dunwalk, bribery. If you really think that's true, why not have the DOJ investigate him? That would be an abuse of power. You're serious about this? Serious enough to meet you in a room that most people in this building don't know exists. Go to Illinois. See what you hit. Hammer. I can't help you if you won't let me. But I can tell you this. I do trust you. Because I think you know when something is right and when it's wrong and when it's too much in the gray to decide. You always have. I trust that instinct in you. It's one of the things I love. And I think you should trust it too. Before you do something you can't walk back from. Now come to bed. Terms is a Spoke Media production. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Stitcher, Wondery.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Featuring Lydia Mackey, Jeffrey Schmidt, Ian Ferguson, Aaron Roberts, Robert McCollum, and Valerie House Smith. Creator and executive producer, Lindsey Graham. 
Co-executive producers Keith Reynolds, Michael Federico, and Robert McCollum. Coordinating producer Aaliyah Tavakolian. Music by Lindsey Graham. Written by Robert McCollum and Michael Federico. Directed by Robert McCollum. To tell us about how you listen to podcasts, visit wondery.com slash survey. Hi, Lindsey Graham here, creator and executive producer of Terms. I wanted to thank our listeners for all of the support and kind words we've received about our opening episodes. And I wanted to ask that if you like the show, please share it with your friends, your family, coworkers, strangers, even people who have never listened to podcasts, especially them. Encourage them to subscribe. Help us bring them into this world. Thanks for listening. And that's this week's show. Please send us a message at sonicsociety at gmail.com or join us on Twitter at Sonic Society. Check out the Facebook pages and groups, including audio drama, radio drama lovers, and audio script writers. And if you can, give us a good five-star review. It absolutely helps to get us out there in the world. Jeff, when can we expect one of your amazing projects finding its release in an upcoming Sunday showcase? You know, something like maybe Shakespearean? <laughs> well, we're working on it. And uh, mm. there's that, and there's a, a few new ideas that are in the mill. So uh, I, w- I want to get something on pretty darn quick. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, being a part of it and uh, hearing my stuff on Mutual. Oh, that'd be so much fun. And we have to start looking back into getting into Temple of Vampires again. Yes, yes. That's uh, that, that, that's a big, long project that we hope to be able to finish. That's going to be fun. Uh, Temple of Vampires, just a great, great show. So there's just so much to do and so much fun. And uh, I can't wait to get going on more of it. It's a ball. And thank you so much for joining me up here in the Bent House this week. Until next Sunday, for David Aldime, Jack Ward, thank you for listening and thank you for coming, Jeff. Oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. It's an honor. Now I'm back down to the ninth floor with Lothar. <laughs> Take care. All right, you too. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. If you produce audio dramas, it obviously isn't to become rich and famous. You love the medium and you want to share your passion for theater of the mind. The Mutual Audio Drama Network is looking for you. Mutual presents audio dramas every day of the week, each with its own genre. Mystery, sci-fi, comedy, horror, all reaches of the imagination. It doesn't matter if you produced your shows years ago or are still cranking them out. Share them on the world's largest collection of modern audio drama and audio fiction. Give a listen at MutualAudioNetwork.com. And if you'd like to be a part of the excitement, with free access to all sorts of voices, sound effects, music, and more, just drop a line to mutualaudio at gmail.com. The Mutual Audio Drama Network. Why not join us today?